right, today we're going to talk about opening champagne the way I like to open champagne. Don't do this with good champagne. If you do this with a Tattinger and I catch you, catch you I'm going to tell you to scrote them out. Do this with cheap champagne because it's a lot of fun and some of it does go to waste. So I've got a little barefoot bubbly here. I'm going to take the top off of it. What we're going to do today is we're going to open it up. Uh, traditionally, people think you need a sword like this. I am Sparta! To open it, you don't. You can do it with a, mile, with a, with a myriad of things. Today I'm going to open it up with the knife I carry on my side. What I want to do because of this though, if you're doing it with a sword and you're holding it for somebody and they're going to sort it off, leave your wire on there. But I like to take my wire off and before something you didn't see is that I took this wine and I stuck it upside down in this bucket full of ice to really get it cold before I sorted it. Now every champagne bottle has a seam down the side right here. We're going to show a little close up of that in a second. And that is the weakest point in the champagne bottle. They have two, one on each side. So you want to expose that, because that's where you want to hit it at. And we're going to open up a couple today just for fun. Now we can open it up with Mr. Dexter here by just going straight across the top like this and just following through. You don't have to take a big swing. You start here and you follow through. Watch how I swing and follow through on this. Very simple, let a little bit pop out and there's your sorted champagne. Now that's sexy as hell there, guys, if you want to impress a woman. Next up is a D-Bond. Super cheap champagne, great making mimosas. This is great stuff to do on Sunday morning with your family. Everybody in my family opens champagne this way. You don't have to have a big knife, a good chef's knife to do it. In fact, this is my knife. You'll always see this knife on my side when I'm cooking. Once again, I go find that little secret area right here where the, where the seams come together is the weakest part of that bottle. You're going to hit and swing right through it, hit and swing right through it. But stay right there, one on each side of the bottle. That's why it's a lot easier and much more impressive when you do it yourself. You don't need a big sword, all you need is a decent knife. Just remember, it's nice to kind of look away, that way you don't have a chance of wanting to chop. Just run the way that bottle feels and you're going to go right up that seam On a very hard ass bottle, let's try the other side. This should really spew out a lot. Like that right there. It was nice and bubbly because I hit it so many times, but it's very simple, very easy. You'll see that come off. Sometimes it comes off perfect. This is just fine. Remember, you're just filling champagne glasses. People are having fun. All right, these are the champagne corks we popped off today. When I let do this, somebody do this, if I hold it and they sort it out, I like to always go back, put the cork back together, twist it with the wire, hand it to them, and that's a keepsake, because most of the time, this is the first time somebody's ever sorted the champagne, and they really enjoy doing this. So make this a gift, make it special when you do it with somebody, and don't drink champagne with somebody unless you like them. That's the most important thing out there. There's nothing worse than drinking a cheap champagne with people you don't like, so only drink with people you like. Have a good Sunday, have a good week. And don't drink shit you don't like.